including rape, false imprisonment and kidnap. Joseph McCann is a horrendously dangerous individual who showed complete contempt for his victims. One of the most dangerous uh, sex offenders I think that we've ever seen in this country. The Prison and Probation Service apologises as it emerges McCann had been mistakenly released from prison three months before he began carrying out the attack. The former Conservative Prime Minister Sir John On major calls on voters in some areas, not I think that he's wrong, and I think that he represents a view that is outdated, alas, a great, uh, uh, greatly that I respect uh, him and his, and his record, uh, and I think that what we need to do now is honour the, the will of the people and get Brexit done. Meanwhile, the Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn claims a leaked government document shows the Prime Minister is misleading people about his Brexit deal. This is cold, hard evidence that categorically shows the impact a damaging Brexit deal would have on large parts of our country. I'm Christian Fraser in Kent for tonight's last televised debate between Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn in front of a live BBC audience. It's six days to go to the big vote, everything to play for. Teenager, John T. Bravery, admit. Okay, I'm so sorry for uh, this interruption um, in our broadcast. Right, so then his first fight against Andy Ruiz Jr. There'll be a three stone weight difference between the two when they clash in the ring. For their world heavyweight rematch tomorrow, Joshua's lost weight. Ruiz has gained more than a stone. We'll break it all down for you in about 30 minutes. Thanks, thank you very much. And we'll get all of the weather from Ben Rich. Good afternoon. It's been pretty mild out there for many of us today, but at this time of year, with mild weather, often comes wet and windy weather. And that is exactly what we're going to see this weekend. In fact, our first named storm of the season could bring severe gales on Sunday. I'll have the details later on. Also coming up. <laughs> the moment this four-month-old baby's hearing aids were turned off for the very first time. So, good evening. It's so good to have you, all of you here. Um, this is a conversational English practice, and my name is Vladimir, and uh, I'm very happy to have all of you here. So, please turn your microphones on and say hello to me. Hi. Hello, Dasha. It's so good to see you back. How are you doing? Me too. Uh, I'm doing well. Great. Great to hear that. Anybody else, please? Hey. Hello, Mark. Do you, you remember me? What is that? Do you remember me? Yeah, sure, of course. Nice. So. After she leaves, this uh, hello. 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 Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Wow. Is Matthew? Yeah, it's Did, me. How are you doing, Matthew? Well, quite okay. Thanks. Good, good, good to hear that. Anybody else wants to join us? Please do. Just say hello. Um, yeah, and uh, we do. I, I have no idea what is going on. Um, yeah, we'll just keep on doing it. All right, and um, I see some other people present here. So, do you want to say hello? Just turn your microphone on and say hello. Now, the next question is always is, uh, what is new? Now, Dasha, please share some news, please. <laughs> Everything as usual and 
I don't know what to say. Okay. Uh, today I I took took part in a competition mm -hmm. um, on basketball. Very good. Excellent. So, how was uh, this competition? Did you win? Uh, we won two games. Excellent. Congratulations. Yeah, right. thank you. Yeah, Matthew, how about you? What is new? Me? Okay, Mark. Uh, okay. You? Yeah. Hello, Mark. Um, uh, me? Okay. Yeah. What's new in my life? Yeah. Um, good marks at the school. It's nothing new. Or oh, it's something new to me. Okay. Great, great to hear that. Well, Matthew? Well, I've... I've, re uh, I've written uh, a composition at school uh, lately. That is go uh, going to be my admission for the exams. Uh, Russian. Oh, okay, that's in Russian. That's, that was yeah, that's in Russian. At, and it's, it's really a big event for uh, all the 11 graders. Okay, excellent. So anybody else, do you want to join us? Do you want to say hello to us? Just turn your microphone on and say hello. I can see Inessa. Inessa, do you want to say hello to us? Hello. Hello, how are you doing? I am fine, thank you. Where are you from? I am from Russia. I understand, whereabouts in Russia? Which, I don't listen. Which part, which part, which city of Russia? Um, Rostov. Mm -hmm. Very good. I know many people from Rostov. Good. It's so, nice. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm 17 years old. Uh, I study in 11 class. And I want to improve my English because I uh, watch our your webinars. Very cool. So you yeah, are very welcome. Thank you so much for your kind words. All right. Um, now, I think that uh, it's possible to keep on working. And uh, let me just remind you what we did in the previous class. Okay. So. I will show you, um, yeah, that's, this is what we're going to, to do today. So today we will keep on talking about uh, future continuous and future perfect. So if you don't mind, let's uh, read. Uh, I think that we finished um, exercise five. And now, if you don't mind, exercise six. So. Anybody um, who just uh, is willing to start reading, Matthew, you didn't uh, attend the class, the previous class, so maybe you will start. Mm, well, uh, the phrase is to be unlikely to plus verb and to be bound to plus verb refer to the future. Mm -hmm. Think about the future of one of your friends or family members. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What is likely or unlikely to happen to them in the future? Yeah. What is sure. bound to happen to them? Oh, that's you just take one sentence and uh, um, also read the example. The example is Susie is unlikely to get married. That uh, equals to uh, it is imp improbable that uh, Susie will get married or the other way around without any prefixes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Susie is likely or unlikely to get married. It's probable, that's improbable, that Susie will get married. Okay, so if you uh, understand, just, um, or if you have any questions, just give me some sign that you do not understand what is going on. But um, 
praise is uh, likely to, unlikely to. Uh, these phrases are uh, one of the helpers for us to talk about future. So just pay attention and it will be very helpful for you uh, in your exam. Um, Mark, if you please read uh, the second question. Mm. What's uh, bound to happen to them? Mm -hmm. And the uh, example? Uh, Susie is bound to get married. Go ahead. It's uh, certain that Susie will get married. Is that you can understand that um, is bound to, and the meaning is that it's certainly going to happen. And I just want you to pay attention to these two phrases. They are very common, likely and unlikely. We use it a lot, almost every day. And also to be bound to do something. So please use, feel free to use in your um, essays or whatever. And now uh, we will do a little bit of exam practice. Um, and uh, if you can see here the tip, Dasha, will you please read the tip before we start? Uh, missing words are typically preposition, pronouns, conjunctions, adverbs, and verbs. They will not uh, usually be nouns or adjectives. Mm -hmm. So, missing words are typically prepositions, pronouns, conjunctions, adverbs, and verbs. They will not usually be nouns or adjectives. So do you understand all of these phrases? Prepositions, pronouns, conjunctions, adverbs, and verbs. Nouns and adjectives. Do you understand that? I hear a word conjunctions at first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so who knows the word conjunction? Can you help us? Conjunction? Maybe. It's something that uh, links the words together. It's something like we call Soyuz in Russian. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Good. Any other questions? Okay. All right. And then there is no questions. Mm -hmm. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Um, in America, uh, the, there is a, a pretty popular um, I wouldn't say that this is a rock band, but kind of a rock group or rock band, which is called School Rock. They have lots of uh, uh, songs about uh, school topics. And one of these uh, songs is called Conjunction Junction, What's Your Function, and so on. So if you go on the internet, you will easily find this. Um, if you just want to... Um, have a look at it. Okay, and then um, you have exam practice, and exam practice is open close. Any ideas? What's that mean? Open close. What is that? Well, I don't have the faintest idea of why does it called like that. Is it called like that? But I know from the experience and from what. Uh, you just showed us that it is some kind of a text with some words missed and uh, you should uh, put only one verb, only one word, sorry, uh, in each gap. Mm -hmm. But why yeah. is it open close? I don't really know. And you have to pay attention that close uh, is written in different ways. It's not like C-L-O-S-E, it's uh, C-L-O-Z-E or Z is American and Z is British. So um, I will just, uh, I, I want you to pay attention because, uh, you know, uh, we have several types of the tests uh, which are usually being used for your exams. And uh, some of them are called open tests and some of them are called closed tests and uh, some of them are called open close tests so uh do you have any idea what's the difference between open and closed test no 
Well, uh, a closed test is a is a test with variance. Why? Uh, whereas uh, the open test is uh, the test without variance. To even we we do not use the word variance in this uh, way. Uh, we use the word options. Okay, options, not variance. Variant uh, we use uh, in uh, the meaning like uh, the English, uh, the British variant of the English language, the American options. variant. Yeah, options. Yeah, and uh, never forget that the same. For example, when you say um, in 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 Russian, uh, when you say, for example, we писали сегодня тест вариант первый, вариант второй. We do not say it in English like that. In English, you say, for example, test two A, test two B. So if you want to have uh, two different, um, two different, um, let's say, versions, two different versions of the test for two different groups of people, like you have in Russia, we never call it variant. We call it. Um, Test 2A for uh, one group of people and test 2B for the second group of people. So this is how it goes. So be careful about using the, the, the words, the vocabulary. Variant is only, as I said, for American variant of the English language or British variant. Yeah, you're almost right. So um, the, the meaning is that, okay, I will just... Um, tell you it in Russian um, because it's um, it, it's about um, terminology technicalities so тесты бывают открытого закрытого типа и открытого закрытого типа совместно это значит что вы можете либо брать варианты из головы любые варианты из головы либо вы можете брать варианты из тех, которые вам предлагаются в множественном выборе. Либо вы можете иметь какое-то ограничение по выбору. Как дается здесь у вас? Здесь вам сказано, что выбирать вам нужно будет только из предлогов, местоимений, союзов, наречий и глаголов. И это не будут существительные или прилагательные. Но вам не даются опции. То есть uh, все остальное нужно брать из головы. Okay? Any questions here? Wow. That is why it is called open close. Uh, does it make sense? To me it does. Okay. Um, so I think that um, probably um, it's possible to start completing this test and uh, Inessa, will you please start number um, zero is an example and then uh, you will take uh, number one. Please. Some people think of traditional gender roles as begin like as 1915's TV sitcom. Dad puts on his suite and goes to the office while mom in her Apron says at home and next I will do next, yes. I uh, you know the, the sound is not very clear. So um is it possible for you to say it over again? I mean the second part. Uh, what uh, do you think will be good for number one? Mom and her apron stays at home and What is your opinion? I think on, on, puts on, in the number one. Well, I think she's right. About what? Uh, put, puts on, on, yeah, number that, one. That, that's correct. Puts, that puts on his suit, that's absolutely correct. I'm asking about number two. On, uh, number two. Yeah. And on. Uh, and does? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Very good. And does the housework. Okay. The housework, yes. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I, I probably uh, you, you want me to make it bigger, right? Oh, nice. Yeah, but why why didn't you tell me? So you see, it's, it's it's a conversational practice, and you you do not talk, so that's kind of funny. May I do number three? Yeah, just hold on, uh, because we need to check the vocabulary. So uh, the vocabulary here is uh, traditional gender roles. What is gender? Uh, it's uh, uh, woman or man, yeah? Yes, that's correct, but how do we say it in Russian? Paul. Paul. Yes, you can say, and uh, do not forget that we have uh, another word for this, which is in your questionnaires or, you know, application form, uh, one ketak, it will be sex. Uh, that, that will be Paul. But uh, gender is uh, also Paul. Or... Um, it can be rod, rod like muskoi rod or um, okay. All right. So then, traditional gender, and I, I encourage you to learn this vocabulary. Я очень хочу, чтобы вы выучили этот словарь, потому что вам в сочинении может попасться такое, вам будет трудно написать мужской пол, женский пол, если вы не знаете слово gender. Okay. So that and then sitcom. What is sitcom? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, please. Um, uh, so complicated to explain it in English, but I'll try. Yeah. Um, there is uh, a laugh. Um, mm -hmm. Correct. <laughs> laugh. Under the uh, case, the cadre is me. You can say so. Yeah. But um, anybody else, do you want to uh, explain this to me? Uh, well, it's kind of a TV series, which is no yeah, yeah, it's a TV show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a TV show which is more like comedy and uh, it portrays maybe some uh, something like ordinary life but uh, in uh, a humor humorous way okay very maybe. good any any other definitions anybody else wants to give the definition of a sitcom i agree that a sitcom is some kind of comedy absolutely very true very correct so I just wanted to add a little bit just for you to remember. Sitcom is a situational comedy. Situational comedy, for sure. And uh, like I said, this is a TV show, a typical TV show, situational com a comedy. And uh, uh, like, uh, I think that uh, in NASA said, or I don't remember, or maybe Dasha, that uh, you have, uh, the recording of uh, people laughing, if you remember that, usually. You remember? People laughing. And uh, it's, it's not real people laughing, it's just uh, they play the recording. Yeah. Okay, you understand that, correct? All right, so that puts on his suit and goes to the office while mom and your apron. What is apron? What? What is apron? Apron. Mom in your apron. Uh, I think in Russian it's uh, fartuk. Am yeah. I right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely correct. Nice. Yeah. Apron. Um, good. And again, I, I encourage you to remember this uh, vocabulary. Okay. Now, um, I think that uh, somebody wants, uh, I, I think that Mark said that he will read, uh, he's willing to read number three. Please do, Mark. Number three? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, for most of human history, uh, it, uh, hmm, let me think, taking the efforts of both men and women when they're working. Exactly. Okay. It is taken. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, we will talk. 
it is taking the efforts of both men and women, whether the, uh, uh, whether working in an office and in the fields to look after the family, and that's the situation yeah, that's to which... Question. Yeah, that's okay, that's enough. So, any other versions, and any other ideas, any other comments here? Well, I suppose it can be, uh, it had taken, like in the past perfect, but I see no other uh, event in the past which can be used to explain this kind of tense. Maybe it, it has taken because it started one, uh, sometime in the past and it's it's still ongoing. All it right. Has taken. Uh -huh. Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, that's, that's a very I think that uh, number three may be <sighs> pa passive, uh, it is taken, is and verb in third form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. Mark, Mark, we will talk about that. Okay, I, I heard uh, Mark and I heard uh, Matthew, so just ladies, please join us. Dasha and Vanessa, what do you think? I think about uh, number four. Uh, I don't, I don't know, is it right, but I think that uh, or in office or in the fields. Yeah, very true. That's correct. But uh, first of all, my question is about number three. I'm sorry, but uh, first of all, let's <laughs> somehow decide about number three and then we'll go to number four. I'm sorry, you are right, but uh, please, how, what do you think about number three? Yeah, it has no idea. Uh, I totally agree with Mark. Mm -hmm. That's Dasha. Dasha agrees, and then Inessa. What is I it? think uh, it is taken the efforts of both men and women. Mm -hmm. Is it is taken? Yeah, um, that's that's a very tough situation. Very tough situation. Okay. Um, yeah. How can I explain it to you? I will try. And again, you know, this is grammar, and so that is why I will just um, somehow um, give you some ideas. Uh, and again, uh, for the teacher, it's it's not about the teacher is right or wrong because I have the teacher's book, if you remember. And so that's very easy for me to give you the correct answer. But anyway, um, I, I just want to share some ideas. So um, first of all, uh, you need uh, to, um, to understand the meaning of the sentence. And uh, I wouldn't say that uh, the meaning of the, sen the sentence is really clear for everybody. So uh, Mark, do you want to translate it? Uh, number three? Uh, just the whole sentence. Uh, так, but, uh, but for most of... No, 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 типа, сейчас скажу. No, uh, I understand, but I can't say. I know, I know what you mean. Uh, it's really hard to e explain this sentence. All right. Um, anybody else? Just help us. Maybe me. Yeah, please, please go ahead. No, для большинства история человечества. Very good. Ah, uh, I just uh, understand. Но для больш, но но для большей части человеческой истории. Yeah? Yeah, that's correct. correct. Finally. And then? Это нужно для этого приложить усилия и мужчин, и женщин. Everybody agrees? Well, на протяжении большего промежутка человеческой истории было необходим труд э, как мужчин, так и женщин, будь это работа в, не знаю, в конторе в какой-то или э, в поле, 
и в содержании семьи. И эта ситуация, к которой нам кажется, стоит вернуться. Not like that, but uh, that's all right. So, okay. Um, okay. Let let me comment um, the, what is going on here. So, вот вы знаете, вчера у меня было занятие с взрослыми людьми, и я как обычно стараюсь, чтобы люди сами выбирали ту тему, на которую им нужно поговорить, потому что это взрослые люди. И они сказали, вот давайте не так, как вы обычно, я обычно веду урок без учебника, давайте вот возьмем учебник. Ну, я говорю, хорошо, какой? Они говорят, solution. Я говорю, хорошо, какой? Они говорят, элементы. Ну, пожалуйста. У меня учебники обычно все, ну, самые популярные скачаны. Я открываю учебники, я говорю, какую тему вы хотите здесь? Они говорят, present perfect. Я говорю, хорошо, я нахожу тему, узнать, это легко найти. Нахожу тему Present Perfect и спрашиваю, а почему вы хотите Present Perfect? Они говорят, ну как, мы хотим разобраться. Я говорю, я почти не использую Present Perfect. Зачем? И я поясню вам свою мысль, поймите правильно, что вполне можно обойтись двумя временами, настоящим и прошедшим. Но только если вы очень хорошо понимаете их. В данном случае вы должны очень хорошо увидеть, что если вы используете it is taken the efforts, это будет время, как вы правильно сказали, страдательный залог, но present simple passive voice. То есть в основном это будет present simple. И теперь вам нужно вернуться к определению present simple. Основное определение, и почему я вам говорю, что вполне достаточно использовать всего два времени, настоящие и прошедшие, но только нужно знать их железо. И это основы основ. Вы делаете ошибки как раз на основах основ, а не на present graph. И здесь, если вы увидите, что такое present simple, это действие, как вы помните, которое происходит всегда. То есть, типа, вода кипит при температуре 100 градусов. Волга впадает в Каспийское море. Луна вращается вокруг Земли. Солнце встает на востоке. Вот типичные примеры Present Simple. Возвращаемся к вашему предложению. Для большинства человеческой истории постоянно требуются усилия мужчин и женщин, или работающих в офисе, или, подсказываю вам, в полях, это значит на практике. In the fields – это оборот, идиома такая. На практике. Практическая деятельность. In the fields. Или присматривать за семьей. Если вы используете, всегда требуются Sorry. усилия, на протяжении всей истории всегда требуются усилия, то здесь происходит столкновение между всегда требуются усилия и на протяжении всей истории. Почему? Потому что for most of human history это предлог for, который требует какого времени? Mm. Well, most progressive. Oh, uh, present perfect progressive, sorry. Ну, не обязательно progressive. Самое главное, что present perfect. И самое главное, что по смыслу очень трудно а вот это вот подобрать, если вы вернетесь к общему содержанию, общему контексту, по смыслу очень трудно, всегда требовались усилия и мужчин, и женщин. А на протяжении всей истории требовалось и требуется усилия и мужчин, и женщин. 
Я понимаю, well, it's... Я, я понимаю, я понимаю, что вам очень трудно увидеть разницу. Okay, um, it is taken. Берутся, берутся усилия и мужчин, и женщин. Uh, здесь больше брались и берутся. Потому что есть well. спор. Еще раз. Sorry. Выучите, выучите как следует uh, simple uh, и simple present and simple past. Да, да. Well, I wanted to make a point that, but for most of the human history, not but all of human history, most of it, it means that uh, some there was some point in human history when it uh, started being like this, and now it went on. Not for all human history, not for eternity. And, uh, Matthew, I, I, I don't see the point. Uh, здесь uh, показывается период человеческой истории. Длительный период. И самое главное, еще раз, пожалуйста, задумайтесь по всему контексту. It is taken the efforts. It has taken the efforts. Здравствуйте. So, and uh, uh, again, uh, the second question is about the vocabulary, which I want you to pay attention. Uh, for example, uh, you can say that uh, we were in the fields. Yes, uh, we were in the fields. We were in the fields. We were in the fields. На экскурсии на заводе. So what is going on? Turn off the microphone, please. Yeah, I can, but uh, I, I, I hate to do that. Yeah, I did that. That's okay. So um, I see that people joined us and uh, probably you want to say something. You want to say hello to us. Do you want to say hello to us? Okay, I, I will make a short uh, commercial break so that uh, you will be able to see that, um, just hold on, this is uh, my, um, okay, yeah, all right. Um, uh, hey, uh, mm -hmm. what, what is? There is uh, two minutes left. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, so let me just uh, show you my uh, page. Okay. Uh, if you can see it, uh, this is my page in uh, uh, contact. And uh, it is called uh, uh, Emphasize the English. It says in here, emphasize English or Wubleon Anglisky. So if you find me, um, just join our community. I will be more than happy. And I will try and help you um, anytime. And if you want to write your testimonials, your comments, um, you know, the, the, the feedback about the reviews about my classes, so you're very welcome to write it here. If you want to write something, please, uh, you are very welcome. All right. And let's go back to the book. And um, I will go back to the book. And um, so, uh, in essence, I have just joined the, the club. Please do. Um, Inessa, will you please read the, the next sentence? And. Um. By 2051, uh, make up 47% of the workforce in the United States, up from 30% in 1915. All right, so which, which, word, uh, which word have you used? What was I the think. Uh, Present perfect, maybe. No, no, we, what is the word which you used here? Oh, woman. Okay, 
Present perfect, mm -hmm. just, just an example. Я запомнил, когда мне было 7 лет, первый раз present perfect. I have got it too in English. Я получил двойку по-английски. Может, вы тоже запомните. I have got it too in English. All right, go ahead. 